team up with creatures from the forest and collect ingredients for your magical potions as you attempt to restore order and balance the seasons in Brew. <laughs> Hey gang, and thanks for joining us at Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're reviewing the game Brew from Pandasaurus Games. This is from designer Steve Torres, and artwork is from Jake Morrison and Andrew Thompson. This is a two to four player dice worker placement area control game. It takes about 35, 45 minutes to play. Pandasaurus was kind enough to send us this preview copy to check out. So let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, place out the main board and resources, and populate the creatures and potion stacks. Put out the forest cards, based on your player count, and give each player a character and their matching colored dice, plus two white element dice, and a wild resource, and then you're ready to begin. To start the round, everyone will roll all of their dice, and then they'll take turns placing their dice onto the matching forest spaces in order to collect resources. On each turn, after having placed a die, players may use their resources to buy any one potion, and they may also drink a potion each turn if they would like as well, utilizing the one-time action on the card. If players place a die on the tooth symbol, they may choose one of the face-up creatures and add them to their team, giving them ongoing abilities. Once all dice are placed, players will then determine who has area control over the forest locations, awarding cards that will have endgame points. For the next round, new forest locations are dealt, and the main board is flipped to the night side, revealing new actions, and all the dice are rolled again. Play continues in this manner until all the forest cards are played, then players tally their scores, and the player with the most points wins. In Brew, there are a number of different ways to score points throughout the course of the game. Each creature that you collect will be worth one point at the end. Each potion will be worth a differing number of points. And sometimes those will be based on the number of resources that it costs to be able to purchase it. Other times it will be based on how good the power is that you get out of it. You may get a better power with a lower point value. Uh, and then each territory, each forest that you win will be worth points at the end of the game as well. And then one of the interesting things in the game is that if you're able to pair up your creatures uh, based on the seasons that they prefer with those forest locations. I guess it's not seasons, it's types of forest. Uh, at the end of the game, you'll score additional points. You'll score three points for each creature instead of just one. And so making sure you're getting the right creatures and winning the right territories and stacking that all up at the end of the game is a huge part of how you win. Yes, the first time we played, I wasn't sure which, what I needed to do as far as which direction to go for points. Do I get lots of animals? Do I just try and really focus on the area control portion of the forest? Do I get the potions? You probably need to do all of the above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, a lot of games where there's lots of different ways to gain points. Um, those potions, you'll need to gain the resources needed on the forest locations to purchase them and they will give you some really powerful actions to be able to um, change up your dice or whatever you need to win the area control portions on the forest. Now each character in the game also has a unique power that they can use. One of the characters uh, is able to scorch uh, spaces on the area on the forest uh, whenever they play there. So getting area control over that forest is going to give you big points each round and then being able to make sure that your dice have the majority is key so blocking off some of those other spaces with scorching tokens is one of the ways to do it uh, one of the other characters is allowed to have four uh, creatures. You're only allowed to have three normally. They can have an extra one. Uh, and so each character power kind of gives you a kind of a different approach to how you might strategize to win the game too. Yeah, I've played this at different player counts. It's surprisingly similar I agree with that. at the different player counts. Um, even for a two-player game where you're battling out area control, um, the one interesting aspect of that is it's not just the forage dice that are your personal color, it also includes those white element dice. So if somebody plays one of those Which dice- Which don't belong to anybody. They, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're their own standalone color. Um, if somebody plays one of those, it, you, the red flame on the die can stack on top and negate somebody else's die, but that die also counts as its own color. So there's times where uh, the 
majority goes to the Elmel dice and nobody claims that forest. So there's also that to be thinking of. Uh, we've had some interesting interactions in the game where um, there are some that allow you to move and move dice from different forests um, on some of those potion cards. And so you can really change up who is going to get the majority right on the last couple of turns at the end of the round. Right, so in the game, those th element dice, each player has two. Uh, they don't have forest symbols on them. They have uh, wind, fire, and water. Uh, the water one allows you to collect extra resources if you use it as a resource die. I mean, you get to use them all as resource dice, but the, as she was saying, the fire one allows you to burn up basically someone else's control over a spot on the board. Uh, and then the wind allows you to place it and then pull back one of your additional dice. And in the game, you're only allowed to use a potion or buy a potion if you have a die to play. And so there are times when you can play your potions right and end up with more dice than the other players. And that gives you a longer turn, which can be very powerful to swing that area control at the end of the round. Yeah, there are, the forests have differing um, colors on them. And there are some forests that are either or, which can be very helpful for some of your animal cards that have the different powers on them, some of them go with a specific forest. Some of those forests that are dual colored can be used for either or, so it gives you more opportunities to um, have a little bit more variety of your animals. You're not as strict on, oh, I didn't get this one forest that I needed, but it's okay because I got one that's two colors, so it's okay. One of the neat things about the storyline is that you're in this magical world and there's the seasons are changing, the day and night hours are changing. You do actually flip that board when you get, you know, each round you flip it from the day and the night side. Those actions on the main board don't change dramatically. It's more just like which die allows you to do those things. Uh, that was one of the things that I was very excited about when I started to play and I was like, oh cool, the second round is going to be totally different. Uh, the game has actually got a pretty steady feel throughout the course of the game. That little change doesn't do anything too dramatic. After you've played two or three rounds, you know, those cards come up. There's nothing, you know, that like you want the one that has the seven points if you want big points. Uh, mm -hmm. If your dice don't line up, it doesn't really matter. While you can pay a matching resource to be able to play a die onto the board, um, if you don't have the right dice, it's just really hard to get that area control. So some of it is based on that roll and then just determining how to spend your stuff each turn. The game does feel very steady after that first round. Once you learn it, everything's pretty much the same. The variance is really going to come in when you play with players who, uh, like, we both have similar approaches to stuff. Oh, well, I'm going to balance. Let me get some potions and some creatures and some area control. If you play with a player who loves the area control portion of it, that's going to shake up your game more than the, the, or the cards that are out on the table or the dice rolls. Uh, one thing I appreciated about this as a dice worker placement is that everybody gets one roll at the beginning and that's what you get. So you can look around and see that, oh, Will didn't roll any twigs this round. Right. So it's gonna he's going to have to pay his resources to be able to go on this forest that has mostly twigs. So I'm probably guaranteed to get, if we're doing a two-player game, I might be guaranteed to get that a little bit easier. Right, if I just than, scorch the one spot that he could go to yeah, easily. Yeah, so uh, that is one thing I appreciated about the worker placement portion with the dice. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes that can thwart what you'd like to do where you're the one stuck uh, being able to try and mitigate what you rolled. Uh, there are por potions that allow you to re-roll so you can hopefully get one of those if you don't do well. I really enjoyed the art style for the game. It looks like some of those cool modern cartoons that are out. Uh, I think they did a good job with the art. The uh, We played with Ryan. He's like our go-to colorblind guy. The symbols, uh, he had trouble seeing the difference in the, the like the winter season and the whatever season where it's like blue and green together, but the symbols did allow him to differentiate it. So I think they did a good job mm -hmm. testing that out. Uh, overall, I had a good time with it. Uh, I think it's, um, it's like I said, it's got such an even feel to it. I didn't feel like there was like a super climax at the end uh, or anything like that, but I did feel like I, I mean, I enjoyed the dice worker placement action. The area control yeah. addition to that was kind of nice. And just having this pile of like, okay, I got one character that gives me points if I score on green, and I get extra victory points if I do this. Uh, our scoring has been pretty tight most of the games that we've mm -hmm. played, so those couple of little decisions definitely will yeah, push you, you up or over know, to the victory. Yeah, and you don't know, there's no scoring track for this. It's just the amounts on your cards. So it's hard to know, because you, it's too hard to remember who scored what and what their cards had on them when they're scoring, when, especially the potions once you use them. So you have no idea how everyone else is doing 
till the very end, which some games that is very rewarding and enjoyable because you're not the one lagging behind on the score track the whole game. Uh, you can just continue to fight for those forests and then um, you know gain the animals and the res or the potions that you need the resources to pay for the potions. So uh, that is one way that even though you're fighting over the forest and the area control, it's not so much uh, falling behind on the track. You won't be depressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is Brew from Pandasaurus Games. If it looks like something you'd be interested in, definitely check it out now uh, on their website, or I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, or at your friendly local game store. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. Uh, let us know in the comments what you thought of the art style for Brew, and uh, if you're a big role, uh, worker placement die fan, how you feel about what that looks like in here. Love to hear from you. See you guys in the next one.